How's it going guys? It's Kyle or the How To Guy 123 here and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a PCIe Wi-Fi 6E card into your PC. The card that I'm going to be installing in this video is a Gigabyte Azorus GC WBAX 210. However, you should still be able to follow this tutorial for most other PCIe Wi-Fi 6E cards on the market. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to install the card into your PC, then install the proper drivers so that the card is recognized and functioning properly, and so you're able to connect to the 6GHz Wi-Fi band for better speeds and less Wi-Fi interference. The Azorus GCWBAX also includes Bluetooth 5.2 and we'll also get that up and running in this video as well. Let's begin by installing the Wi-Fi card itself. Begin by shutting your computer down, turning the power supply off, then unplugging the power supply from the wall. Now take off the front side panel, and on my case, which is an NZXT H510i, I need to unscrew and remove a vertical PCIe bracket. Now locate the PCIe times one slot on your motherboard. It should be located on the bottom of your motherboard under your GPU. Next, unscrew and remove the PCI slot cover in the last slot or the one that corresponds to the PCIe times one slot on your motherboard. The Wi-Fi card is a one slot card, so you should only need to remove one slot cover. Keep the screw aside as we'll need it later to secure the card. Next, insert the Wi-Fi card into the PCIe slot. The card can only be inserted one way. Align the connectors on the card with the slot, then gently push it down until it's firmly seated. Make sure that the card is fully inserted into the PCIe slot. Now we can screw the Wi-Fi card to the PCI bracket on the case. I can also screw the vertical PCI bracket back onto the case as well. Next, we'll need to connect the card to a USB 2.0 header on the motherboard using the provided cable. This part is actually optional and is only needed if you want to utilize the card's Bluetooth. Plug one end of the cable into your Wi-Fi card and the other into the USB 2.0 header on the motherboard. You may need to consult your motherboard's manual to identify which header on your motherboard is for USB 2.0. My MSI motherboard has two USB 2.0 headers, and it's pretty easy to identify them since the header has USB written on it. However, on my PC, both USB 2.0 headers are being used. One of the headers is being used by the fan and RGB controller that came with my case, and the other header is being used by my AIO cooler. So to get around this, I bought a USB 2.0 header splitter on Amazon for about $10. I plug the Wi-Fi card and the fan controller into the splitter itself. Then plug the cable coming from the splitter into one of the USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. I then routed the splitter and cables to the back of the case to keep things clean. I tuck the splitter into the power supply bay to keep it out of the way. If you do the same, just make sure that the cables do not get disconnected from the splitter when moving it. I found this out the hard way the first time I installed the card, as the cables became partly disconnected from the splitter, causing the Bluetooth not to work. We are now done installing the Wi-Fi card. We can put the side panels back onto the case. We can plug the power cord back into the power supply and turn it on. The last step is to screw the antenna into the back of the card. Once the antenna is connected to the Wi-Fi card, place it somewhere with a good Wi-Fi signal. The antenna that came with the Azorus GCWBAX210 has a magnet on the bottom and I just placed it on top of my case with it pointed towards the router. You may need to test out different positions for your antenna in order to get the best Wi-Fi signal. We can now turn on the PC and boot into Windows. Once you have booted back into Windows, the Wi-Fi card should be automatically recognized, allowing you to connect to your Wi-Fi network. If for some reason you are unable to see or connect to any networks, it's likely that you need to install the proper drivers for the Wi-Fi card, and I'll walk you through the process of installing the drivers in just a moment. 
But in my particular case, you'll notice that my Wi-Fi is divided into separate networks based on the different frequency bands. The THG Wi-Fi network will connect to my Wi-Fi with the 2.4 GHz band. The THG 5 GHz Wi-Fi network will connect my network with the 5 GHz band. And I have one more network called THG 6 GHz, which will connect my Wi-Fi network with the 6 GHz band. However, the 6 GHz network is currently not being listed here. And this is also due to not having the proper update drivers for the Wi-Fi card installed. So in the meantime, I'll just go ahead and connect my Wi-Fi with the 5 GHz band. Bluetooth is also not working at this point, as we also need to install the proper drivers for it. So if I head to the support page for the Azorus GCWBAX210 to download drivers for my Wi-Fi card, you can see that the latest drivers that you can download here are from January 2021, so over two years ago from when I'm recording this video, and you can see that they're also for Windows 10, there are no drivers to download here for Windows 11, but since the Azorus GCWBAX210 and many other PCIe Wi-Fi 6E cards are based off the Intel AX210 chipset, we can download up-to-date drivers from Intel's website. I'll leave a link to the download page to where you can get these drivers in the description below. On this page, we can download the drivers for both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. We'll first start off by downloading the Wi-Fi driver. Click View Details beside Windows 10 and Windows 11 Wi-Fi drivers for Intel wireless adapters, then download the 64-bit version of the driver. After you click download, accept the license agreement, then save the driver anywhere on your computer, and then the download will begin. While the Wi-Fi driver is downloading, we can go back and download the Bluetooth driver. Once again, click on view details, but this time beside Intel Wireless Bluetooth for Windows 10 and Windows 11. Then download the 64-bit version of the Bluetooth driver. When downloading the Bluetooth driver, I recommend saving it to the same location to where you downloaded the Wi-Fi driver. Once both drivers are downloaded, begin by double-clicking on the EXE for the Wi-Fi driver to install it. Once the installer for the driver has opened, click Next, then accept the license agreement and click Install. The Wi-Fi driver will begin to install. And once the driver is done installing, just click Finish. You'll then be asked to restart your computer, click no as we still need to install the Bluetooth driver, and we'll restart our computer later. Now that the Wi-Fi driver is installed, double click on the EXE for the Bluetooth driver to install it. The installer for the Bluetooth driver will open, click next, then next again, accept the license agreement, then click next, then choose to do a complete install, and click install. The Bluetooth driver will begin to install. Once the Bluetooth driver is done installing, just click finish. Now go ahead and restart your computer. Now that I'm back on my PC, I'm going to try and connect to my 6 GHz network. You can now see when I scroll through the list of available Wi-Fi networks, my 6 GHz network called THG 6 GHz appears and I'm able to connect to it. As a side note, I do recommend going into your router settings and splitting the different bands into separate Wi-Fi networks. I won't go into this too much in this video, and the process of splitting the bands may vary between different routers, but splitting the bands into different Wi-Fi networks will allow you to have a different Wi-Fi network for the 2.4, 5, and 6 GHz bands like I have in this video. For my router, I simply needed to go into the app on my phone, edit the Wi-Fi settings, and turn on the split band setting. The reason that I recommend doing this is if you directly connect to the Wi-Fi network with the 6 GHz band, you know that you will always be connecting with 6 GHz, whereas if you combine the bands into one network, Windows will connect to the band with the best signal, so it might automatically switch between the different bands, and you won't always be connecting to 6 GHz. Anyways, if we head into Windows settings and click on Network and Internet, under Properties, it does confirm we are connected to a 6 GHz Wi-Fi band. Additionally, now that we have a proper driver installed, Bluetooth is now working, and I'm able to pair my Bluetooth keyboard. Finally, I'm going to do a network speed test. 
The speed test averaged an excellent download speed of 926 megabits per second, but during the test, you can see highs of up to 1200 megabits per second. The upload speeds are also very good, and I'm getting an average of 455. And that brings us to the end of the tutorial. If this video helped, please leave a like. If it didn't, leave a dislike. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to help you guys out. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.